Shalom, shalom. This week's parashiyot are Vayakal and Pigudei, and it talks all about the Mishkan the Tabernacle and the contributions and the work to go into it. And something very striking appears uh, numerous times when you begin to read the pasukim Vayakal. You'll see that the word lev, a heart, appears over and over again. Um, specifically, um, God says that whoever has Nadiv Libo, his heart um, inspires him to contribute. Um, and it says, Chacham Lev, someone who's wise hearted. And it says, uh, Nasali Bo, his heart was uplifted, was, was um, it says, inspired to give um to the the things that go the um materials that go into making everything in the mishkan and um it's a curious way to express this um specifically when it comes to wisdom wisdom of the heart we typically think of wisdom of being of the mind not something of the heart heart we think of as emotions so it is a curious thing and um, there's a lot to learn, I believe, from that. First of all, God's saying whoever whoever feels inspired by his heart, who wants to um, give, who feels this is like meaningful and really valuable and, and wants genuinely with all his emotion to give, um, should be the ones to contribute. He doesn't want uh, people giving, feeling coerced. He wants it to be a hargashatova, a good feeling um, in go, going into the foundation of building the Mishkan. And interestingly, then it says, you know, if, if his heart inspires him and the, the people who have um, wisdom of the heart. So I wanted to discuss this wisdom of the heart as opposed to the mind. And I think that wisdom of the heart is very different from somebody as we're talking about wisdom that is acquired, um, that is a mental, that is something, um, you know, that has to do with, you know, I mean, we all know very brilliant people that are, seem to be full of wisdom that, you know, let's see, doctors, lawyers, politicians, or, or just even you can see people um, who are that way, who, who read a lot, who know a lot, and they can make deductions and projections and, and um, all sorts of uh, brilliant things that they can speak about or that they can, um, you know, do in their life. But just because somebody is really smart and has a lot of information has the, the ability to, to, um, incorporate that information and to, uh, you know, have very intelligent conversation or be able to make some sort of lucrative business or something. It doesn't mean that they have a wisdom of the heart. A wisdom of the heart is somebody who is inspired to do things that are smart, meaning that the outcome is good, is a good outcome. It's good for them. It's going to yield um, good results uh, for them and for the people around them. And it's it's smart, meaning that their actions that they take are all guided towards something that has a good purpose. And that is somebody whose heart is wise, but the desire is smart. It's smart for them. It's smart for life. Um, and a lot of times people who just have the, you know, the knowledge and ability, um, who are very brain smart will do very stupid things because they're guided. Something in their heart is guiding them towards motivations that won't be good for them in the end, be it uh, money or power or whatever it might be They're They're guided, uh, ego, whatever, to do things that in the end, a lot of times yield tragic results for them. So somebody who's wise hearted wants and knows and understands, understands what, what, what life is and what's good, what's good for the heart. The heart is the, we think of the heart, right? That's, that's where the whole life force is. It, it, it beats the blood to the whole 
serves the whole body. Now, if you're wise and you want in your heart, it's, it, it's wanting something that is good for the total holistic being. Um, and that is a wise hearted person. And then it's very fascinating because the Pasuk says, Kol Ish, one of the Pasukim that mentions these, uh, the word Libo, Kol Ish Chacham Lev, Asher Natan Hashem Chachmat Libo. So it says, every man who has a wise heart, that God gave wisdom in his heart. So it seems redundant, but I don't think this is redundant at all. I think sometimes people they have that have this wisdom of the heart, what it does is it yields them more wisdom because God knows that he sees that what they want is good and they desire the good. And then God will in, keep giving him feeding into that wisdom. And it's something that grows when you want good and you try to do good and you're, you're putting all your efforts into that. God will help you to have more of that. Um, and I think that also, I mean, that's very, uh, goes into the whole interpretation with Paro and hardening his heart, because the concept in Judaism is that, and this is in the Gemara, is that what a, a way that a man wants to go, um, God leads, God helps him, He leads him. It's what we desire. God's like, I'm putting you on this earth. You make your own decisions. You want good, yeah, I help you along. That you want bad. You can have help with that also. God doesn't try to influence you. He lets you decide, make the decisions. And when you try and do something, you, you, you're gonna, you, you, when you're using all of yourself to try and do something, then God helps him. He allows you to do that and doesn't, you know, doesn't stand in your way. And if not anything, he helps you on the path that you want to go. And so when some, when these people, wanted to make contributions and they desired to put into the foundation and they really wanted to do things, then God helps give them more of that wisdom to know what and how to do it. And I think that this was a crucial component um, into building the Mishkan. The foundation is the key, the most important thing. What goes into what goes into the things that we make in the beginning and how we start it? A lot of times it is the whole feeling, it's the whole aura that surrounds the place. And if this was going to be a place that God, that the man is trying to make as a, as a meeting place, as a bonding place between us, the nation, and God and each other, God wants it to have a good feeling with a good spirit. He doesn't want people to be coerced into giving materials or working for the tabernacle because that is not good. I mean, it, it, look in history, you know, with like the, the Parthenon, the Colosseum, whatever, the funds were forced out of the people. You used slave labor. It was a horrible thing. And it's, it's just not a good uh, place that you feel good about when you know it's built on the blood and sweat and tears um, against the will of the people. God says, no, if it's going to be a holy place, with a good feeling that everybody should feel good about every single person, then it should be donated with a desire and a love and affection from the people. And so therefore only those people who really want that should donate, should help to build, should do these things so that there can be a really good feeling for everybody when, when they're, in this Mishkan, in this tabernacle, and connecting with God with only good vibes. I think it's a great lesson for us. Um, when we do something, if we want it to be successful and for, for people to enjoy it and for people to have a good feeling towards it, we should try and do things in a way um, that are good that we, we're trying to have a better future for us and for everybody else and that we want to do. And, and that will yield blessing. It will yield blessing. It will yield God's assistance. And God willing, will endure. With that, I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.